<laughs> We're reading from Disciple by Walter Mosley. Walter Mosley Science Fiction. I love it. Um, I just wanted to read it. I wanted to have some fun. Um, give some literature lessons. So let's get to it. I worked through lunch and planned to stay late so that Hugo couldn't say that I was slacking off on top of being late. I often worked extra time anyway because Dora was also faster than I at entering data. I was usually running half an hour to an hour behind her at the end of the morning, so working through lunch was a regular occurrence for me. At 3 o'clock, I was going full guns when I heard Dora say something fantastic to Miguel Covesa, the mail clerk. They say it might hit the moon, Dora was telling the handsome young Mexican. Whoa, Miguel said. You hear that, Trent? It's almost the end of the whole fucking world. A comet, I asked. No, Dora didn't, didn't actually say fool. It's a meteorite. What time? Why, Dora said, are you writing down all the meteorites in your journal? There was a healthy dislike between Dora and me. She was young, white, and very good looking in a modern way. Uh, she most often sneered when looking at me. I don't dress all that well, and I'm old enough to be her father. Why don't you tell him, Chica? Miguel said. Dora didn't like me, but she was hot for the young Latino man. It was said that he was a fabulous dancer, and Dora had made it known that she loved salsa. The Hubble telescope registered the thing at around 1230, she said. They said that it was moving in the shadow of the moon before that. I had forgotten about Braun because I was late. Before falling asleep, I dismissed the early morning electronic chat as an anomaly, but maybe a high school friend who got my email somewhere. But then after the announcement of the meteorite appearing out of nowhere, I felt a chill between my shoulder blades. What's the matter with you, bro? Miguel asked me. What do you mean? You're asking Dora, said with almost no distaste in her voice at all. No, you're shaking, Dora said, with almost no distaste in her voice at all. I turned my computer off and then back on again. After it had booted up, I chose the internet option rather than stand alone. From there, I went to the BBC News website to look up the latest news. It was there. Today, the Hubble telescope detected a meteorite over a hundred feet in length, hurling out of darkness and headed it seems, on a collision course with the moon. Scientists say that this is not an unusual event. Meteorites come in close proximity to the Earth and even enter our atmosphere with some regularity. The article went on to describe how the celestial body avoided early identification because it was hidden in shadows cast by the Earth and the moon. I sat there trying to dismiss the fear growing in my chest. There had to be some explanation. Astronomer, astronomer Ivan Lindstrom told our BBC correspondent that he was shocked when he saw the meteorite register on his instrument panel. At first, I worried that it would collide with Earth, Lindstrom said. I thought I should call my mother and tell her to say a prayer for me. It's rare that a meteorite of this size sneaks up on us but I guess that there are many surprises out there in the universe. I wanted to get back to work, to normalcy, but Bron was the only thing on my mind. His proof seemed unassailable, but why would he need to prove anything to me? This man could see into the future, into space. I couldn't even find a girlfriend, a good job, passed the New York State driving exam. Mr. Tryman, Hugo Velasquez said, he was a pompous little man who was partial to uh, mute-colored suits and checkered vests. He was light-skinned, from Honduras, I think, and older than I was by a decade or, or more. Hugo didn't like people like me, whatever I was. Yeah, I said, distracted by the news and its ramifications. Are you online? Uh-huh. There's this meteorite that no one saw, but I... It's against policy for daily entry clerks to get online, the manager said. You were told this. I gave you the memo by hand. Yeah, sorry. That is five marks. 
The punishment focused my attention on the prissy floor manager. We'd known each other for 11 years. 11 years of memos, marks, and ill will. Here I had knowledge that even the BBC hadn't suspected before 1226, and Hugo wanted to give me five demerits. So there you're dealing with. We don't know if Brian is from the future, uh, but he can predict the future. And so he has to find out. And then you're dealing with a workplace. Um, it's nothing worse than being black on the workplace with nobody respect you. Um, and it's just awful. Um, but in most of society and most of our society up until this year, we were always disrespected. And I'm so happy that in 2021, you will have less people dealing with this because we are going to be the workplace. This is going to be the workplace. And those of us who don't make it in the new world order, the new world order will have to compensate for it. Or there will be no order at all. So that's something we think about when we read fiction. We should think about um, the structure of old institutions and things like that. So it's kind of cool, it's kind of good, nice look at history. I thank you for your support. Until next time, please take care of your mind, take care of your body, and be safe.